Adding a window to the back of our cargo trailer camper conversion made it so open and airy inside. I'm Kevin. And I'm Stacy. And we love to do projects and different things we can do ourselves. For a couple of reasons. One, because we just enjoy it. And two, because we love to save money. And that allows us to be free. Today, we are going to put a window in the rear door of the rescue wagon. Now, you might say, why would you want a window in the rear door of the rescue wagon? Well, we love to open this. We've got a screen in there when we're at the beach or other places where we can see, but sometimes, like today when the heat index is about 100 degrees, you just can't handle having, the, having that open and not having air conditioning. So we want the window in there so we can enjoy the beautiful view without dying in the heat. And uh, so we're, I've never put one in uh, this type of thing before. I've done a lot of windows into houses, but I've never done one in here. So um, we're gonna attempt this and hopefully it's gonna go well before it starts raining. We got a window from uh, the factory, solid rock cargo trailer factory, because that's the same kind that's in the rescue wagon right now. So we wanted to make sure that we had the same kind of stuff. Uh, basically these windows go in, you seal them, this little lip goes on the back, you screw it in and it sandwiches it together. But it is the exact same window that's already on the rescue wagon right now. All right, first step that uh, I did is I took the window, laid it on some cardboard and traced around the outside. It was not super easy to do because it's actually kind of raised a little bit in the middle. But uh, this is what I came up with. Uh, on this piece of cardboard, I cut it out, I've got the inner template and the outer template depending on which one I need once I get going. The whole idea is going to be to center it up as high as I can get it without uh, getting into the uh, things that are already in here and then making sure on the inside that that's probably going to have to move but it's probably going to leave me two holes for that handle. It's probably going to end up being something like this. Might get covered up, might not. Um, I'll have to wait and see, but those are the little things we have to do. And I think the inside of this do door is hollow, but we'll find out when we get in there. And if it is, I'm going to have to build some type of supports around because the window, it, it cinches together and holds itself on like that. So I'm putting tape, blue tape onto the door. So when I mark my area, I'm kind of making it a little bigger than I normally would because when I, when I start to cut with the jigsaw, I don't want scratching and leaving any marks onto the, onto the paint. So I'm mainly doing this to protect the paint. So we put some tape on to keep it from getting scratched. It doesn't have to be exactly straight. To get this centered, it's about nine and a half down from the top here, nine and a half down from the top here, nine and three quarters over, nine and three quarters, and then 32 from the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure and put lines in there and draw some lines and then I'm going to lay it on here and kind of come around. You know, when you cut these out, they're not exact, but it's gonna be close because there is a, about a half inch lip on the uh, outside of the window. So it will cover up if you're not exactly right. I'm gonna drill a hole into here, which actually I'm gonna open this so I don't get uh, a bunch of stuff inside. I'm gonna, so I'm going to drill the hole through in four places. That way it'll allow me to bring my jigsaw through and be able to do that. So. Putting some tape on the inside. I don't really have to, but I just don't want it to jag it up the edge if it gets loose and starts smacking around. So at least the tape will probably hold it together. Okay, so now I've got to use a metal blade. The problem is a lot of times with these metal jigsaw blades, the ones that are for metal, they are fine tooth, but they're also short. So one thing I do need to make sure is once I put this in, that it's gonna be long enough to go through both layers. So my metal blade's not long enough, so I'm gonna try this general purpose blade and see if it's long enough. If it's not long enough, I'm gonna to have to go try to find a different option for cutting through. So let me see if it'll cut it.
Let's wait. Let me. Uh, I'm going to use the file to try and file off any sharp edges along the edge here so that I, one, I don't cut myself, and two, it doesn't cut into the uh, butyl tape that I put in here and cause it to leak. I was lucky that there was wood in here, and then there's some insulation on this side, which should be enough to hold things together when I bolt it, uh, when I screw it down. So. Um, I'm, that's good. I don't have to build any kind of additional frame in there. So that was uh, That was a special treat If the wood wasn't in here, I would have to cut pieces that I could put inside that would create a Firmness for the sandwich of the window if it was just open it would squish it too much and then it would leak I'm gonna put some Eternabon tape around the outside. So I am going to uh, rub some alcohol around the outer edge to make sure that uh, it's clean around the outer edge so it will stick. And then these stickers that are in the corners, this one will probably be okay because it's below, but the other ones, I'm gonna have to remove those, get them off there, and this one here. So the heat gun and some alcohol got those stickers off. Normally I would use like Goo Gone on something, but the problem with Goo Gone is it creates such a slippery surface that uh, things will not stick to it. Whereas alcohol cleans the surface, and this is 90% alcohol, so it's, it does a pretty good job of prepping the surface for sticky stuff. Now, next thing I'm gonna do is take this Eternabond tape and put it around the whole edge to kind of keep everything together and keep it kind of sealed up. And, uh, um, We'll see how that goes. Try to keep it even all the way around. Okay, so that's on there. So the next step we're gonna do is we're going to put uh, butyl tape around the outside. And if you're not familiar with butyl tape, I call it the roll of goo. This is actually a different company that I got it from. This one's a little bit skinnier, so. It's a uh, gray tape that I'm gonna go around the outer edge with, uh, just like I did the white tape, only I'm gonna go around the, the whole entire outer edge. Okay, so I got the butyl tape on there. Now, eventually, I'm going to peel this, peel this off, and it's going to reveal the, the butyl tape, which is like a, a clay-like substance. But before I do that, I wanna make sure it's on good but also I wanna put the window in and kinda of see where it's gonna sit because when I squeeze it down, it's gonna seal in behind it, but I want it to kinda of squeeze out a little bit around the cracks. Okay, so that's good. That'll be coming out on that. So now what I need to do before I take that off and stick this in here is I need a measuring tape right there to make sure that I've got the same distances from things here to make sure. Nine inches, yep, that's good. Eight and seven eighths. Eight and seven eighths, so that is a good spot for the window to sit. And butyl tape is kind of like sticky clay. And then once we get done, I'll, I will actually take the, after it sits for a day or two and squeezes out, I'll come with a little plastic butter knife, take off the outer edge, and then I'll tape around it and then I'll put a, um, a uh, some caulking sealant on it, some silicone. Where the two pieces come together, I make sure I overlap them so that uh, it doesn't, um, doesn't have a space to leak. Yep. All right, so I'm gonna set this window in to the area that we need it in. And again, actually, can you grab me my measuring tape? I'm gonna double check it with my measuring tape. And just make sure it's even. Normally, the ring goes on 
and then it holds up against the wall. The thing is though is this is already flush with the wall so I'm going to need a little bit of something to go around the edge. So this must be a little thinner than the normal sidewalls which actually seems like it is. So I'm going to have to create almost like a rim or a gasket for that out of something. I've got some wood but uh, I don't know I'm going to that's going to be a that's going to be a little bit of a tough one. I decided to just put two rings of butyl tape around this to take up the slack and I'm hoping that as I pull it together it'll cinch up nicely and I can maybe trim this off and just put a nice little bead of white caulk around there. Uh, so right now Stacy's going to hold the outside while I try to screw this in and we'll do a couple screws at a time get it lined up as we go. I bought this uh, silicone self-stick weather seal at Home Depot. So the, the goal is to put it around the window with the kind of the fat side sticking out and just kind of cover up the different stuff that's there. It's got a sticky and so I'm hoping it'll, it'll stick. I'm going to actually start up here and go around. That way it doesn't fall off and on the bottom or on the side. It, gravity will hopefully hold it in. So that trim will actually work pretty good around the edge, gives, a, gives it a clean look, covers up the stuff. Um, not too shabby. I'm putting some tape around the outer edge so when I do my caulking, I can peel it off and have a nice smooth edge. So I'm gonna do it all the way around. And I was looking for silicone, all they had was this Flex Seal stuff, so we're gonna try it out. It's going to be in my way. We'll see how that works. Hopefully it'll work good. The Flex Seal worked pretty good. Taping around the edge though, you kind of need to let it sit for a second because if you start to peel it, the Flex Seal's thicker than normal silicone, so it kind of wants to pull it up, so I had to let it sit a little longer. So we're now ready for the final step for our window, which I'm super excited about because I love windows. And the final step is to put the curtain on because we do want to be able to close it sometimes. So we ordered off of Amazon these really cool stick on curtain holders. So we're going to use these. They're really heavy duty and we use them in the inside on the other curtains. So we'll use these on the outside to hang the curtain rod and then we'll put our curtains up. So here we have it. We have our back window in the rescue wagon and we have our curtain. We're able to open our curtain up. We'll get a little tie. I use a hair tie to keep the curtains open. Then I can use the hair tie when I need to. So it's beautiful. I absolutely love it. It looks so amazing. Great job, Kevin. Everything turned out great on the window. Remember, doing stuff yourself allows you to be free. Thank you for watching, and if you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe and give us a like. You can also follow us on Instagram at Be Free Benson DIY and check out our adventures on our YouTube channel, Be Free Benson Adventure.